family unit will be deported. The, the child who was born in the United States, whose birthright citizen of the United States, would also be deported in that case? Yes, that's correct. There are legally contested questions under the 14th Amendment of whether the child of an illegal immigrant is indeed a child who enjoys birthright citizenship or not. They're contested. That was presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. He wants to end birthright citizenship. In other words, the children of illegals born in America would not be Americans. Radical stuff. Vivek Ramaswamy is with me here in the studio in New York. Welcome to the program again, Vivek. Good to see you, Stuart. That was very strong stuff, outlawing yeah. birthright citizenship. What justifies that? So if you have entered this country illegally with the intention of using it, having a child here as a basis for establishing citizenship in this country, that is not something the 14th Amendment was designed to protect against. And Stuart, if you want to get on the legal scholarship side of this, a kid of diplomats who's born here definitely does not qualify for birthright citizenship because there are qualifiers in the 14th Amendment. It says you have to be subject to the laws and jurisdiction thereof. And so I'm highlighting previously unexplored questions because we're facing a border crisis. Yeah. There are thousands, tens of thousands of illegal migrants crossing the southern border every day. Even the Democrat mayor of the city we're in right now in New York City, claiming that this will destroy New York City and cities across this country. We can't sit by and watch passively. I think we have to treat people with respect, with dignity, but we're a nation founded on the rule of law. That means that if you come here illegally and have kids, birthright citizenship should not extend to the kids of illegal immigrants in this country. President Biden seems to be more worried about the global warming than yeah. nuclear war. I'm just going to roll a quick soundbite. Roll that tape, please. The only existential threat humanity faces, even more frightening than a, than a nuclear war, is global warming going above 1.5 degrees in the next 20, 10 years. And we're in real trouble. There's no way back from that. Well, is global warming an existential threat in your view? I believe it is not. I think that eight times as many people die of cold temperatures rather than warm ones. The right answer to all temperature related deaths is more abundant access to fossil fuels. Stuart, there's a 98 percent reduction in the climate disaster related deaths, sure. hurricanes, tornadoes, heat waves over the last century, again, owing to more access to fossil fuels. So respectfully, I disagree with President Biden. I think that the, th the heightened threat of nuclear war is actually as high as it's been since the end of the Cold War. I'm worried about marching our way into major armed conflict with the Russia-China alliance. I do see that as a greater threat in any foreseeable future than is the threat of an incremental increase in global surface temperatures. You're the millennial candidate, basically, aren't you? I'm the youngest the, candidate the, the ever to run in our party. You yeah. Well, your generation feels yeah. very strongly about climate change. The younger the person, the more they are to see it as an existential threat. Aren't you going against your own generation? Well, Stuart, I am bucking the trend because we have to speak the truth. What's going on with young people in this country is we are hungry for a cause. We are starved for purpose and meaning at a time in our national history when faith and patriotism and hard work and family have disappeared. So we're turning to new secular religions, cults instead. That's what this climate change cult really is. It's a belief system that substitutes for feelings like faith and patriotism. That's why you're seeing it amongst young people in particular. But if the more we dilute that to irrelevance with our own positive vision for American national identity, the less we're going to obsess over these secular climate cults. You would reverse all President Biden's green policies? Completely? I would. Drill, I would. baby, drill? Absolutely. I think we need Oil, to drill, coal, frack, gas, a lot. burn coal, embrace nuclear energy for that matter, too. And one of the mysteries, Stuart, is that the biggest opponents to carbon emissions are also opponents to nuclear energy in the United States. That says that the climate agenda has nothing to do with the climate. It's really about global equity letting China and the rest of the world catch up to the United States. That's why they're against nuclear energy, because it might be too good. But it does take a Republican to go beyond just traditional talking points on this, as I'm now doing, is to actually dive deeper into the substance of the science and make the argument grounded in reason. What advances human welfare, human prosperity? That's what I care about, not carbon emissions, which I think is the wrong focus for us. Uh, you were at the U.S. Open last night. For, I was. For the, cha the men's championship. And I believe that you were a nationally ranked tennis player yes. as a younger man. Okay, That's right. Yeah. 
Good clarification. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you this. What would you have done with those protesters who interrupted the semifinals of the women's game and held up the game for 49 minutes? What would you have done with them? So, look, I do think that part of being a protester and part of engaging in civil disobedience is you have to face the consequences of that civil disobedience. So I think police should absolutely hold them accountable to the fullest extent of the law. But in the meantime, I also believe in free speech and open debate. I would have done the same thing that I do for protesters at my own events. I'll give them the microphone. Let them make the case as long as well, they get to be heard you in return. You can't do that at the U.S. Well, you know what? I think it would have been an interesting moment to say, you get 60 seconds to say why you believe this is actually going to be an existential threat no, to humanity. No, you can't and, do th- that. And, and they wouldn't have been able to do it and say, as long as you get to hear the other side in return. That's a two-minute break. It's not really that much different than the break they already took. It would have been more productive. But then they need to be held accountable because that's part of what it means to engage in civil disobedience. You do face the consequences. And I do think these protesters who interrupted that event should face the consequence just as anyone else should. But I also embrace free speech and open debate. And I apply that same standard, especially to those who disagree with me. But not at the U.S. Open, please. Well, don't, don't, don't do that. My first recommendation was be they shouldn't have been doing what they were doing. But if their feet are glued to the ground, let's at least use it to make a point and make it instructive that this is a religious cult-like belief system. It's not grounded in reason and science. And we can see that by engaging in open reason and debate. The facts just don't hold on their own merits. You know New York very well. I, you, I do. You, you come frequently yes. over the years. As you walk around these days, in the yeah. last week, do you notice... Uh, a deterioration in this city. So I have to admit, I got here late last night just for the open, but I've been here in recent months. Yes, there's a deterioration in the city. There's no doubt about it. Compared to even a decade ago or, the, or 2015, 2016, the crime, the fact that you have to look over your shoulder, the border crisis playing a big role in an influx of illegal migrants into the city. And the sad part is you have a mayor who sees those problems and even has a scintilla of courage to be able to speak to it. But when it comes to actual solutions, has to bend the knee to the progressive wing of his party. That's the culture of fear, Stuart, that I'm looking to overcome in this campaign. We have to say in public what people are otherwise willing to say in private. And once we do that, courage will be contagious, and I think we're going to win this election in a landslide. I admire your energy. Thank uh, you. Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you very much for being with us today in New York City. Always appreciate it, sir. Thank it's good you. to see you, Stuart. Don't miss the second Republican primary debate. Vivek will be there. So will I. September the 27th, right here on Fox Business.